Hello, hello. Hello. Are you pumped to talk about dog water safety today, yo? I am. I'm super excited to be bringing in this workshop, um, especially right now. It's starting to warm up. I'm headed to La Quinta for the weekend. It's going to be 106. Not that I'm going to be near uh, the pool with the dogs, but it is starting to warm up we, where we are. And it's really like it's the time of the year where I start to see a lot more dogs coming to the beach. Absolutely. Swim lessons are requested all the time. We have people just dying to get outside and in the water with their dogs, which is why it's so important that we go over the foundations and the beginning before we just kind of, we never ever want to throw them in the deep end and just say, okay, good luck. It's better to know. It's better to know what you're getting into when you're taking your dog into the water. So whether you are uh, an avid, you know, you go out on the water all the time. I know that one of our clients just recently is going on a boat with her two dogs. So I saw her a couple days ago chiming in with some pictures. So whether you are planning on taking your dog on a boat or kayaking or swimming, this workshop is going to cover it all. Now, although we're streaming live into our communities, if you've got a question, just drop it in the comments. We can see the questions, but we're going to answer them at the end of our presentation. Is that right, Julie? Yeah, absolutely. Because we want to make sure that you guys have all of the important safety information before we get into the tiny little details. So because there's lots of types of water, we are really excited because both Yo and I now live at the beach. And I say now because I just moved to Belmont Shores here in Long Beach and it is beautiful. And I live one block from the beach. So wow. um, my two dogs are there, you know, at least twice a week. They tend to bring home a lot of sand with them, but it's so worth it to see the happiness on their face, the recall practice that we get to have but also really, really important because I know I come like prepared when I go to the beach and I see a lot of dog parents just kind of out and about just, you know, hanging. So we definitely want to make sure that people are as safe as possible during this time. So my background, I was a swimmer my whole life. So I knew first, like when I first got Bentley, that I wanted a dog that was going to be able to swim with me or do water activities. Um, I started swimming at a very young age. I did water ballet. I actually ended up lifeguarding in Manhattan Beach. And then in my adult life, I was a triathlete. So I had to swim in the ocean. And I was like, I know for a fact my dog is going to be able to do this. Like, I'm going to make sure that happens. So I started that training early on when, when as soon as he was vaccinated, I was right by the water. Bandit didn't have a choice because I live on the beach. So his first, I remember his little puppy pictures, videos are like, we're walking in the sand right next to the, to the water. So although I'll just tell you guys really quickly, and we're going to touch all basis on all of this. I never really wanted Bandit to be a swimming dog because he was so small and I'm afraid of like, and, and by the way, I don't like going in the water anymore, <laughs> but I was like, Bentley, no problem, but Bandit's super small, means he's most likely going to get injured. You know, the waves are going to go, you know, tumbling over him. So I ended up teaching him something a little different as far as like how I taught them how to swim. So. Oh, yeah. I've seen the excellent skill Bentley has out in open water, like toy rescue. And uh, it's a lot of fun to watch. And I know that Bandit has had some really cute pictures and especially the safety protocol that we were going to go through during this because he's in a lot of the videos. Yeah. And just if you guys don't know who I am, I am Yo Armandaris. Not only am I a certified dog trainer, I am the owner of Canine Learning Academy. And I am super excited to be bringing this topic for you. And Julie, just a quick introduction. You talk a little bit about um, being a positive reinforcement trainer and why that's really important. I, I What I don't see anyone doing that works with us is dragging their dog into the water. Like, let's teach him how to swim, you know, so we do not do that. Yeah. So I am Julie Fryman. You will see my beautiful opal blossom in the picture. And I have <laughs> another beautiful doodle. It's very hard to get them both to sit at the same time. So if you have multiple dogs, I feel you. Um, 
But I, you know, Yo and I met through the Karen Pryor Academy. I was in class with her son and Opal and I just really thrived in that positive reinforcement environment. She was able to learn things so quickly and so like such a wide variety. And especially, you know, in the training community, we talk about flooding, which is both a concept and a real thing here. So we never want to just take our kids or our dogs and toss them in the deep end and hope they swim because I absolutely had that happen to me when I was six years old, mm. um, a, a family friend, her kid was my age. I was his age and she just thought, well, she should know how to swim. So let's just do it. And I almost drowned. Oh, and gosh. I remember like, there's, it's not always a fight or flight. Like you're just going to paddle as hard. I just remember sinking to the bottom and you'll see that with some dogs that just freeze when they're, yeah. they have no idea what to do, which is why we want to take really, really small steps. Eventually I got back in the pool. I was on the swim team and lived by three lakes my whole life. So that overcame, but it took like seven, eight years for me to ever want to hold my breath in water again. So we definitely don't want it to take that long to undo some traumatic experience with your puppy or teenage dog in such a sensitive time. So we're going to take this small yeah. steps at a time. Yeah. So today's topics, we're going to talk about the benefits of swimming and the risks and hazards. We're going to go over a uh, touch bases on all the different kinds of water sports that are out there that we can think of. And I'm sure that there's plenty more that I've never heard of. Uh, teaching a positive vibe for water activity. So whether you have a puppy or it's your dog's first time being around water, we'll go over the steps on how to do that. Then actually teaching you how to teach your dog how to swim. And we're going to touch bases on our learning to kayak or paddleboard with your dog. We do have an upcoming workshop that I'll just mention right now. It's an in-person we have six spots left for learning to kayak with your dog, and it's on May 27th, and I'll mention that a little bit later. So let's go ahead and jump on in. Again, if you are watching live, I can see you. I'm just kidding. I can't see you, but I can tell you're here live. Just uh, you can post anything in the comments, and we will be able to answer those questions a little bit later. So let's just start off about the life vest. Now, you'll see my mistake and Julie, like we actually did a lot of swimming without a life vest sometimes. And the reality is when it's, it's not very safe. So when it comes time to have an adventure with your dog or, you know, have them even in the backyard, if you've got a swimming pool, let me just kind of go over some of the reasons why you want to have a life vest. So here's some of the reasons why. First of all, there's a convenient handle on the top of your life vest, which just in case they fall in, you're able to pick them back up, especially kayaking and paddleboarding. And I'm going to tell you a little story in just uh, a little bit later on that, but the handle comes in handy. Even your best swimming dogs get tired. They get tired and it could just be one moment like Julie just mentioned where they freeze and they just forget how to do something. So having a life vest can really save their lives. Um, gives you peace of mind. I don't know about you, but when I'm in the backyard laying out at a pool, the last thing I want to do is just like constantly be watching. So it's just going to give you some peace of mind that you, when you hear you know, something happen in the pool, you can look over and go, oh, he's in the water, you know, and give you a little bit of peace of mind. For you people that want your dog to actually enjoy swimming and enjoy water sports, having a life vest can make things easier for your dog. So just think about that, that when we're training anything that we want our dogs to learn or love, sometimes it's just learning and, you know, like, okay, you don't have to love it, but you just still need to know. Okay. Um, but if you want them to love it, we want to make sure that they have a great experience, but we want to make sure it's easy, right? That they're not, not taking chances of going under the water, which is challenging. A lot of dogs don't like having water in their ears. Right. It's the same reason why we have floaties and blow up yeah. you know, cushions for when you're in the pool. It's not always fun to continue to tread water for hours and hours and hours. And it's the same for our dogs. Another reason 
that reminds me of, I just have this picture of my, my son Curtis swam at a very early age and I always had those floaties on him and he just like go out in the deep end with his arms all float. Yeah. <laughs> really funny. Um, Another reason is that you might not see a hazard that's in the water. So especially if you're out on a kayak paddle board, you're on a boat, a duffy, you may not see the, the, the hazard that's out there that might dump your boat. So for that reason, just like we, why we recommend car, you know, in your dog is traveling in a car that they have a crate, there might be an accident can happen. And, and in then, open water, the plant life can mm. sometimes get tangled in there. So you may not even see that your dog is struggling. I've come upon that before where the dog is actually wrapped around in something that's stuck deep in the water. So, so true. And I think, I think one other reason I can think of is the bright colors. If you can get a really bright yellow or orange, it'll help them stand out. I'm talking specifically like in open water. So, I mean, I'm sure there's other reasons for a life vest, but mostly just safety, peace of mind, especially when you're just starting out, letting your dog learn how to swim and making it really easy. Anything else you want to add to that, Julie? No, I think you covered it all. Okay. All right. So what are the benefits of swimming? Oh my gosh, there's so many benefits for both humans and dogs, right? If you've ever been swimming, you know, like you're just, so tired after. So if we have a very hyper dog or a very, um, a really smart dog that needs a challenge to keep learning and keep learning, sometimes this can be a really great outlet for them to do those things as safely as possible. So we're going to go into all ages and stages. You can see mm -hmm. my sweet, sweet cowboy um, up in the kayak with me when he was 10 weeks old. Um, and that was a really fun trip for him. Aww. Okay. It was about a year ago this time. I know. Um, it's popping up on my Facebook feed. I know. So um, for puppies, and we're talking like under five, six months here. So for puppies, especially the most important period is that three to 12 weeks of early socialization all the way up to about 14, 16 weeks. And we want to make sure that your puppy has as many positive and varied experiences as possible because you never know what you're going to want to do later in life. So if they have this early exposure, if they have a good association with it, makes it a lot easier to travel with your dog to go camping at Lake Tahoe or to, you know, make these fun pool day trips with your friends and family instead of just wondering how your dog is going to react. Um, not, and I know some dogs get really freaked out when their owners are in the water. <laughs> not to mention bathing your dog. Hello. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So water safety, definitely important. We want them to have good experiences in lots of different kinds of water, right? Being able to smell a, a marina versus, you know, the chlorine of a pool. Those are all different. If, if water is important in your life, these are the things that you need to think about when they're very, very young. And it's safe exercise without dog to dog interaction. You know, the biggest, mm -hmm. the biggest fear that we have as puppy parents is that our dog is going to catch parvo or giardia or distemper because all of those things come from dog to dog interaction or interaction with poop out in public. But hopefully if we're visiting our own pools or a safe dog safe pool, um, then we're come we're not coming face to face with other dogs. There's not as much um, you know, dirt and trash left around because it gets washed away by the water. So that's a, another, you know, you may not be able to take your dog to the dog park or to the dog beach, but going to your friend's backyard and doing pool or a local lake and just kind of splashing around can be a, lot, a really fun trip when they're young and get them nice and tired. <laughs> and it is low impact. So because their joints don't fully form until they're in adulthood, we don't want them slipping, sliding, jumping, running on hard surfaces, but the water takes the pressure off of their joints so they can form healthy muscles and it doesn't, you know, compress those sensitive areas. Awesome. And for adolescents, these are dogs, you know, six months to two years, sometimes, sometimes three years. It just depends on when your dog uh, you know, how your dog grew up and their breed and all of those things. But adolescence is usually the most 
difficult period for Challenging. pet parents. Challenging, yeah. Sure. <laughs> yes, absolutely. You know, 80% of dogs are actually surrendered to shelters uh, or 80% of the dogs in shelters were surrendered during their adolescent period because of the difficulty that we typically face. So this is a great way to get out all of that nervous and that hyper energy instead of running your dog four miles a day. Take them in for a quick swim, a paddle, a splash around in the shallow end, and it's really great to burn off that extra energy, gives them a full body workout, but it doesn't cause chaos in your house, and you're going to bring home a tired dog, not just a physically tired dog, but a mentally stimulated and satisfied dog because swimming does involve some problem solving. It involves a lot of exposure <laughs> and desensitization and all of these things our new experiences, when we try new things, it tires us out, especially as we get older, which is why we tend not to try as many new things unless you have a lot of great energy in you. So uh, keep your dog active and engaged in their environment. Even if they're pulling on leash or they're jumping on people, we don't have to worry about that if we're in the water. So it's fun for all. And for our seniors getting into Yo, did you want to add anything to that? No, that was great. No, that's, you know, yeah. I, I think we're going into seniors and, and injured dogs that are, that are having, you know, have had injuries like Bentley he had a major injury in the spine. I wasn't sure if it was in the spine or the hips. And, um, one of the things that you can do in therapy is swimming. And that's what we, absolutely. Yeah. so we have shifted over to, instead of, you know, a, an everyday walk or beach stroll, we go swimming once or twice a week in a pool. And that more than just gives him enough exercise. And he is definitely, you can tell that he, and not only does he enjoy swimming, but the, there's not as much pressure on his joints and he's recovering a lot faster. And seniors are typically dogs over six or seven years. So because dogs age so quickly internally, we need to be conscious as, our, I mean, my dog's five years old, but she's getting up there. Her joints are getting more sore. Mm -hmm. She's jumped a lot. She's a big jumper in, in, since she was a baby. And so she's starting to slow down. So the cool water, if you can go to a, a private pool, like in someone's backyard, that cool water really helps reduce the inflammation. It gives them more range of motion. And you'll actually, I've seen a lot of senior dogs, they actually start to smile. <laughs> and if they have on a life vest or a support, they start to really relax because that may be the first time all day that they felt really comfortable with what's going on in their body. So it's, and they can start to move like they did when they were a puppy. They can kick, they can not kick. They can just sit there and float if we have, you know, good life vests and some floaties. So it's, um, it's a great way to keep them involved and engaged because the more stimulation and the more active uh, our dogs are, the healthier they are for for a longer period of time. It's a lot to get in motion and stay in motion than to stop and start throughout their life. Very good. And I know there's probably a lot more benefits, but um, oh, we, we touched bases. We touched a little bit of everything. So let's go over the risk and hazards because there are many risk and hazards of having a dog that swims or bringing your dog around the water. So if you dreamed of having that dog that goes kayaking with you or swims next to you while you're going in the ocean, there are lots of risks. So let's just kind of go over them briefly. All right, Julie. Yeah, don't assume your dog can swim. We said that at the beginning, but just because your dog can doggy paddle doesn't mean they will, and it doesn't mean they'll know what to do when they get scared, they panic, they're tired. So we don't, like we said in the beginning, we don't want to just toss our dogs in or just assume that from day one, they can swim forever and ever and ever. Fatigue is very common and it can lead to some pretty serious accidents. So be conscious of the water quality as well. I grew up next to three lakes. We were always on the lake. We always had dogs on the lake. Um, but there's different levels of water quality, and you have to be careful with mud and sediments and algae especially. Um, there's uh, There was a big incident in Austin, Texas, and unfortunately with my uncle's dog, they went swimming in a lake. Dog was happy and healthy, gave her a bath, put her to, to bed, 
and they woke up and she wasn't with us anymore. She was already stiff and cold. And that was because wow. of a blue algae poisoning in a lake they had been to, you know, for every week since she was a little puppy. So knowing what's going on with your local water bodies, you know, check the weather, check the conditions, if there's been any chemicals or um, reports of blue algae, because some of these things can actually soak in their skin. It's not just about ingesting. And Julie, where do you think they can find that kind of information? Do they go to like a local community group or contact the local rec area? Yeah. So if it's a pool or, you know, a, a salt water or chlorine, we want to, you know, the, the bigger risk there is what's going on their skin, but it should be safe. If you're in an open body of water, look for waters that are easily drained and moving like streams and rivers um, as safely as possible. Anything that's still, you can actually go on the EPA website or you can look it up on weatherchannel.com and they'll give you a water quality report in your area to make sure that you're up to date on what's going on and what might be causing some of these things in our water. Yeah. All right. Any other risk or hazards you want to jump in and talk about? Are we good? Yeah. So using ramps, ledges, and stairs, we're going to talk about how to easily exit the pool. That is super important so that if our dogs get tired, um, fence off or cover your pool to avoid falling in. I can't tell you how many sad stories I've heard yeah. of just, you know, a dog left alone in the backyard and it only takes a second, just like with a little kid. Yeah. So we want to avoid all accidents always. Yeah. And if you don't, you can't put a permanent gate up, just a high X pen. You can like put them all together, attach them. It will save your dog's life. There's also like those automatic, nice pool, what are they called? Covers that go mm -hmm. out and in that they do make. And there's alarm systems that you can put on. They use them for children or dogs, but an alarm will go off if, um, if, if, someone falls in the pool. Yeah, it's there's actually they have a collar. We had a client oh, that a used collar, that. Yeah. There's a collar that if they fall in, it'll make a really loud noise. But as we say below, always supervise in and around the water area. Even if your dog is an expert swimmer, even if they've been around the water their whole life, always supervise in and around the water area because it's slippery. Um, they could get exhaustion or dehydration, which happens when we're out in the sun and we're playing or they're drinking that pool water, which mm -hmm. dogs just sometimes do and they lick themselves and that's just part of being a dog. But having fresh water, making sure they're taking breaks, just like you would with a little kid, it's your responsibility to keep them safe and to make sure that they're not overdoing it, especially when we're just learning the beginning steps. I like that. Bring fresh water. Absolutely. Always. I can't tell you how many times I see people at the beach with their dog and their dog's tongue is hanging out and they just, just sometimes you just forget, I guess. Yeah. So and they're drinking bowl. in the ocean nonstop yeah. and you're like, oh, that's going to be, I'll tell you the oh, first step is a coming. poop explosion <laughs> yeah, yeah. at your house. And then we have to go into sometimes IV uh, uh, hydration. So don't let it get to that point. Make sure your dog takes lots of breaks and drinks really good fresh water. So let's go into the topic of water sports. Now, a lot of people want, may want to do a water sport and you're asking yourself, well, does my dog have to learn to swim? And to answer that question, it's no. There's some water sports. Your dog doesn't have to know or like swimming. You have to be able to, you know, make sure that they're safe around the water. But if your dog doesn't like to go swimming, you don't have to actually like teach In them how the to water. swim. Yeah. yeah. But you'll do, you want to, you want to make, make sure that you are covering some water safety, you know, for your dog. So like a life vest and all of that. So let's just kind of go over some of the sports we hear that are, have to do with water. Yeah. And a lot of these you can actually do in pretty shallow water where your dog yeah. can stand up or you can stand up. So that's, that's a fun way to kind of alter it for, for less muscular dogs, but water retrieval, Bentley, this is Bentley's sport water retrieval. If you throw something out in the water, he is a madman to yeah. get and bring it back to you. They, we also use this for hunting, for hunting dogs that collect fowl or ducks or things like that. Um, that's, that's part of the job is 
retrieving things in the water and bringing them back. So it's like oh, a next next level fetch <laughs> kind of. Um, there's surfing. You can go surfing with your dog, like on the same board, or you can teach your dog how to lie or stand and balance on the surfboard and just send them in small waves. Yeah, like you just you it, just like a little kid when they're we have that surf, here. Just, yeah, you kind of carry them along and then you teach them how to do it. And then you just kind of send them out to to let them ride onto the shore. And it's, yeah. it's a lot of fun. Yeah. So stand up paddleboard. This was this is my first stand up paddleboard. Probably one of my last because if I have a picture of it, I'm like, yeah, I did it. <laughs> no more. <laughs> but um, paddleboarding is one of those things where your dog doesn't have to swim. They can balance on the paddleboard with you. You go from shore, you're out there kind of working out, having fun with friends, and then you come back to the shore. We do wear life vests to make sure if they fall in, but they don't have to love, love being wet or being in the water to go paddleboarding with you. It's just a really fun day activity as well. And we're going to, Yo's going to go into some steps to make sure that if that's something you want to do. There's dock diving. Now, this is a strong swimmer sport. Dock diving is when they race off a dock. Someone usually tosses a toy or a ball and they see how far they can get. There's competitions. People do it for fun. There's usually local groups. Um, I know especially here in Long Beach and in Huntington Beach, there's I see it on the posts all the time with trainers. But they dive as far as they can off the dock to catch the item and then they fall in the pool, which is a nice little cushion. So that's that can be really fun. If your dog loves fetch, like is the diving, you know, twisting wide receiver, <laughs> this this may be the sport for you. And it is exhausting because they're pushing off with their full force and landing on this soft surface. So um, really good for like Aussies and border collies and high drive dogs. Greyhound. I saw a greyhound that was. Whole, oh, I bet. Yeah. Really, really strong hips yeah. and just pushed for the long, I guess they measure the distance. I've even seen Frenchies do really well in this. So like oh, if God. you're, if your dog want, it likes to be in the water and chase those toys, like give it a try. I say, go for it. Um, and then we also have kayak and canoeing. We're going to touch on that in a second. And then the last one, um, these are the big kind of six sports, but there's a million things that you can do with your dog in the water. And rescue towing is something um, we where we train dogs to pull things in. A lot of St. Bernard's, Leon Burgers, these are um, even golden retrievers. That's their job. Their job is to help save people out in the real world. That's why they were bred. And so if we can teach them to pull in a life um preserver. Sometimes they have them tug in boats if they're strong enough, but this is a class and a, and a way that you can kind of get into power lifting safely with your dog. And it's really, really cool to watch. What a fun activity. If you have a dog that loves to swim, like what a fun activity to be able to go and do that for be so much fun. Yeah. I mean, St. Bernard's get like dropped out of uh, helicopters into the oh, water God. to help tow boats. I mean, it's magical if you go and look it up on YouTube, but even those professional dogs wear life vests, they're Absolutely. always supervised, and they have a handler there to help make sure that they uh, can do the job as safely as possible. So so let's let's go over teaching positive um, vibe with the water for puppies. So when it comes to when you when you have a young puppy and you're like, yes, I want my dog to learn or love to swim, it starts early on. So field trips when they're unvaccinated, just being near water where they can smell it and they can almost taste the air, they can hear the sounds. Um, getting a kiddie pool like you see here in this video. This is up on the deck with the puppies and just filling it up with the tiny, I mean, drops of water the first time. These dogs must have done, you know, at least 20 repetitions by the time these dogs were about 14 weeks old. So from eight to 14 weeks, 20 reps of touching water and a little bit more water each time. So I would use cookie trays. I would use these kiddie pools. I use buckets where there's balls in it and then there's some treats in it and there's a little bit of water. So they're learning how to put their face in the water. A wet washcloth works really well to help your puppies get acclimated to possibly getting groomed and washed. Right. And so for those start beer like the yeah. long haired or doodle beards, like we have, you got to get a good washcloth in there. So start early and do it often. 
Also wiping their paws. So if you can place a dish uh, uh, with water in it and a, a washcloth, or they have those wipes that you can purchase that are wet, place them right by your front door. And every time your dog comes in, wiping their paws and their face. This just helps get them comfortable with the, the feel of what wetness feels like. And then you can progress from there. And short little story about Bandit. I really didn't want him to be a water dog, like I said earlier, but he had to be, you know, we walk on the beach all the time and he goes off leash. Well, there, if you, if you watch videos of Bandit, I'm sure I've posted a million, but early on, right, right away, I got him in the sand and he could hear the water and all of that. I did all the training at the ocean after he was comfortable in the home or at the beach, not in the ocean, but he would, when he, when the water would come up, he would eventually like, he kind of like back away, right? He'd go, oh, no, 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 I don't want to get wet. And he did that for months. I was like, oh, cool. He's going to avoid, yeah, he's going <laughs> to avoid the water. I'll have to like wash him every time he comes in like I do Bentley. But one day, one day, all of a sudden, he like went in the water, like went in the ocean and just went swimming. I was like, oh. Did you have a mom heart attack there? Just like, oh No, because I was like, I was, I was there filming. I was filming Bentley. I know. And I had Bandit in the background filming, but he just, he just went in all of a sudden. So it's funny because I really didn't think that he enjoyed the water, but through repetitions of um, all winter, the deck was wet. You know, so we had that like little dew that's always there in the morning and, and the wet grass and going in the ocean area and, you know, at the beach and he'd get some kind of wet on his paws and wiping his paws every single day. I think he just went like, ah, oh, screw it. I'm going in. And he did. He went, he went right in, head in, came back out. He was like, look, mom. And he kept doing it. And so now I've got two dogs that actually like to swim. And that you have to give a bath every I time they yeah. come home. Yeah. <laughs> advantages of a small dog is that you can yeah, wash just wash them. them. <laughs> yeah. In the sink. Yeah. And then we go into the older dogs beyond puppy, you know, teaching them to have a really good experience or feel about being in or near the water starts off with making sure you choose the right location. So um, finding a place that's really calm, it can be a pool, it can be a open area like we see here in this video of Lake Tahoe. Um, making sure there's not very many waves to start off with and then going in through, there's a process to teach your dog to want to go in the water and to teach them to swim. But as far as having a good vibe, it's making sure that the dog is going at their own pace. So taking them into that area, whatever area you choose, let's just say you, you use like, um, a, a lake area. Hopefully it's not toxic or anything, but if you're using a lake and it's got a really nice like um, sand area is starting off playing a game there, doing some training. I have some videos of me just doing some loose leash walking in the area. Right. I was about and, to say a lot of it is not even swimming related. It's just getting them yeah. closed and exposed and comfortable in that area because that's the very priority. We don't want them to be scared or have a yeah. bad reaction. And that's the first step is making sure they're comfortable with the environment that you're in. Because the water is uncomfortable, the sound of waves and all of that. Like, so if you dream of dog beach, you got to start off someplace or go when it's really quiet and you're there alone. Bringing uh, your dog some favorite of their favorite toys, obviously some treats if you can, and then be prepared to go in. Do not show up there in like a, a skirt and the wrong shoes thinking you're not going in the water. You right. may if you want them go there, you're going to, it's, it's a monkey see monkey do process and dogs will, will follow what they see to be safe. You can't convince them. Oh, it's fine, babe. You know, just go in. It's safe. Like we have to, we have to be our words and go in and show them I'm safe. I can stand. This is comfortable. Do you want to interact with me or do you want to just kind of stay there and watch how safe I am? Which I think is also a really great option for them is just seeing like, oh, wow, mom and dad have fun in this, this space too. So maybe this is a good area. And I'll go over swimming in just a second, but just again, getting your dog comfortable. One of my favorite things to do, and it's not for everybody and it's not for every dog, is if you can find a pal 
a dog pal that your dog absolutely loves. So that's Bentley, right? And you, uh, you bring your dog. So I've done this so many times with a lot of our students. They'll come in and I'll bring Bentley and Bentley will go into the water and the dog will be like, what? And just they'll follow them. So bringing a pal that loves water will help your dog, the other dog, um, get, get at least go and try it and test it out. So either you, the human, you, the pet parent goes in and says, look, the water's really cool. Come and join me. Or you've got a dog pal that, that they like and they love to hang out with. And um, when we were in Tahoe together, I think you were nervous. Was it about Cooper or Opal? I can't remember. It was Cooper because he was about eight months old. He's very tall and lanky. I'd never seen him actually go in and swim, but he was chasing Bentley into the water. Yeah. Uh, but he would stop and kind of watch and then wait for Bentley to bring it back. Yeah. And then he'd go a little further. And then Bentley, I think one time dropped the stick while he was swimming and Cooper was like, this is my chance. <laughs> and I have, I have a video of it because we were already shooting video, but it's the very first time he actually like did a little doggy paddle and he came back and he felt, he was I so know, like, I were... did it, I did it, I did it. Yeah, I'm screaming in the video because yeah. I'm so excited that he got to do that at his own pace. Like there was yeah. no pressure, pressure yeah. or like we had to do this today we took so long to desensitize them that it was his choice and he took a leap of faith and it was like it paid off so big so it's a great great day when you let the dog make those choice you empower them to feel super safe and then they end up like if they if they if they had a good experience it's something that they end up liking right if you force the the time you're like you're on a time constraint like julie said um, it can really change the way your dog feels about water. So be prepared to take time. It could take weeks, months, even years to get to the point where your dog feels completely comfortable. And some, just like some people, some dogs don't want to be in or near the water. And we have to respect that at some point. Totally, so yeah. There's a lot of work that you can do in and around the space, but there are instances where maybe they've never interacted or had a bad experience, but we need, really need to be respectful that not every single dog wants to be in the water, even if you live by the beach. So yep. just, just understand that that's, you know, we don't ever want to push too far with our dogs. Absolutely. Be prepared to bail out on the whole having a dog that swim Absolutely. thing. So how do we teach our dogs to swim? Very good question. And in, in, there are some major steps that we'll go over. I highly recommend if you are a pet parent that really, you know, is, you know, you're an avid water person that you get a trainer in your area, you know, do it yourself if you can. We're definitely going to give you as much information as we can, but hands-on training with first swimming is always a good idea. We have Especially tomorrow. if you're not the most comfortable swimmer or an expert True. swimmer as well, because you have to be able to support your dog through the process. So just be, be, it's okay to ask for help. It's, it's absolutely okay. And we highly recommend it. So one of the ways to um, get your dog to get in the water, we've already talked about getting them exposed is to once they are comfortable with the sight and sound is to use a bowl as a reinforcement. So we do this where if the dog looks at the water, we're going to go mark it, good boy, good girl, and then we'll pay by putting the food in a bowl. Now, the bowl will progressively move, you know, towards the inside of the water, you know, towards farther into the water where the dog's going in. Here you see in this video, we're holding the life vest because these dogs were going to paddleboard and kayak. We wanted the dog to be comfortable with being held by the handle, kind of like the collar and harness grab. So the dog was comfortable with that movement. So we would pay them up with their mouth up over the water instead of in. So if you're using food, be mindful that if you place food in a bowl, sometimes the water will splash up on them. And we want to make sure that the dog doesn't swallow water in the process. Right. So and you here can see as soon as he kind of starts to back out and becomes uncomfortable with the waves, we just let go, right? He yeah. has the full range of motion to, to explore the beach behind him. And so in that little video, I'm going to play it one more time. This dog is getting um, 
we started off with just looking at the water, mark, reward, then we're pause in the water, mark, reward, you know, um, more, more of the body in the water, and then we're progressively moving the bowl. So this is just one of many ways to teach your dog to get into the water. Um, as far as like, if the dog likes to swim, I'm going to go over in the next video, but picking again, an environment where your dog is comfortable with. So these dogs were going kayaking. So this was just to prepare them. They don't have to love, love, love the water, but we just have to get them comfortable with just in case the paddleboard or kayak rolls over that they're okay. They're, they know that they're going to be okay. And just if you look at the splash that's going on, if you dream of taking your dog to the ocean, for us, the sound of those waves crashing, oh my gosh, it's like magical. But for a, to, a, to a dog, it's really scary. You'll see fear and, you know, the whale eyes, you'll see their tail tuck, you'll see them kind of freeze because most of the time they're going, what is that? What yeah, is that why thing? is it chasing me? You know, yeah. they run after it and then the water pushes back against them. And since we can't explain, you know, all of the forces of waves, they have no idea why this water is interacting with them. So, um, you know, take, take your time in moving water for sure. If you're working in a pool, start by showing your dog how to enter and exit after they're able to get in the water. So one of the things I just want to pause this video for a quick second. Let's say you do have a swimming pool in your backyard. If you are a person that has a swimming pool, it's not a matter of you teaching your dog to swim because you want them to like it. It's a matter of teaching your dog to swim so they know how to get out, right? So sometimes it's not fun for the dog to be in the water, but we will place the dog in the water with the life vest and hold the handle. And we will teach the dog where that step is. That is water safety 101. If you have a swimming pool, obviously put a gate and manage it and all of that, but you still need to teach your dog where to get out. That is why dogs drown. They go in circles trying to find out how to get out and they don't remember or they don't know where that step is. Or they so panic. I, they just, they totally. absolutely panic because they're scared and they don't know what to do at that point. So um, we want them to for sure know where the exit is. If we could label it, that would be great. But doing it in so many repetitions that it becomes like an automatic turn to them. Yeah. So one of the things I do with Bentley, because we go to multiple different pools, I don't have a swimming pool, is I call it step and I teach him that what I teach him step early on. And now when I say step, he knows where the step is. So we can go swimming anywhere. And then he knows where the step is at that particular pool. So teaching that platform on cue is a really good if you're going to be swimming a lot at different places or even your place. But definitely it's one of the first things you want to do. So teaching swimming to your dog. Life vest on, use the handle to steer the dog into a direction that goes, that takes them back towards the step. Offer support under the belly, like you see here with Bandit. So there's offering support so he feels like his head's not going under the water. Or I guess this is Brutus. Um, once the dog is um, coming towards you, when they start to swim towards you, you want to um, you want to basically steer them so that their paws don't come towards you because it hurts you. It hurts your chest. It hurts your face. So we normally steer the dog from the side angle. And then we usually have someone on the outside of the pool that's teaching a recall. Come on, come on, come on. So the pet parent is usually on the outside. One of us are usually in the water. Julie's going to be doing Which that tomorrow. Which tomorrow means me. <laughs> <laughs> and we, we basically are going, this is where the step is. So now the dog, you know, gets on the step and there's lots of like, hurrah, there's sometimes food, there's toys, whatever your dog loves. So teaching your dog to swim or to go find the step is a must if you have a swimming pool. Use the handle to steer the dog towards the step. So all the, you're going to try to do is just teach the dog where the step is. Offer support under the belly and use, if you can have a two person team, it works best. So you have someone on the outside cheering your dog on, come on over here. You got this, you know, you got this, you can do it. All right. Pretty, uh, pretty cool. So once your dog has gotten past swimming in the pool and they like it, they enjoy it, 
then you can go into more open water. So from swimming in a pool to open water, those may seem the same to us, but for a dog, it is very different. Well, and so I'll from, tell you, even as a swimmer, it's a whole different game swimming against those waves versus, you know, kind of relaxing and floating in your pool. It can be really challenging and you need a good about a muscle. I know Yo's a triathlete, but those of us who haven't worked out in a while, we got to you have to warm up. You really have to build that muscle as a as a safety protocol. Yeah. So from teaching the swimming to your dog wanting to swim, you can use toys and then you can transfer that over to open water. It just All makes right. me smile. He looks so happy in the water. He does. He loves the water. Let's see. Yep. All right. So let's move on to oh, the water sport of kayaking and paddle boarding. So. If you enjoy this activity yourself, first of all, don't take your dog kayaking or paddle boarding if you yourself don't know how to do that sport, okay? It starts with you understanding how to do, how to kayak or how to paddle board before you can have the challenge of having a dog on that platform. Right. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's already difficult. If you've ever been in a solo man kayak or a paddleboard, you, it takes a good amount of balance and leg work. So it's yeah. not something we recommend for just anyone because you have to be able to keep your stability. And then you add another wobble onto that. It just gets a little bit more difficult. So um, even practicing at home with a surfboard or a, a balance board, and I'm sure Yo is going to mention more of that in a second. Yeah, something you want to do on your own first before you add your dog into jumping on with you. And again, there's lots of risks on taking an animal with you. You know, they they can help they can help you tip over that thing. So you, you know, will be going in. But um also if anything, if you're doing anything more extreme where there's a lot of waves, as you know, it's a chance of just losing your dog. So a couple of things you want to make sure, again, we keep stressing the life vest. I'm going to go into this next. Oh, I'll go give you a second here. A life vest, a leash attached to you. So, yeah. <laughs> but if you have a larger dog and your dog starts moving, it's very easy to tip you over. Trust me. I know. Okay. So and sometimes it's just like a butt wiggle and yeah. they'll shift like, and then you're, you're overboard. So yeah. we recommend a life vest for you as well when you're doing these sports to make sure that you always have a safety net there to catch both of you. Absolutely. So here are some of the steps for teaching your dog to get up on a paddleboard with you. So first of all, again, it's exposure to the kayak, making sure that it is okay, that it's not a big deal. So using treats, we like to ask people that have a paddleboard and kayak to do this at home first. Then the life vest, the life vest itself is a training exercise, teaching them to be okay, putting it on over their head, under their belly and the feel of a life vest. And then getting on the kayak on land first where the dog feels safe, it's not moving, so making sure it doesn't move at all. Now, after they've gone through that and you've got them attached with the leash and a life vest, then we start to bring it in the water. A pet parent will be standing up in the water like you see here in this video, and they're basically steering the kayak and boat or the kayak or paddle board with the dog on top of it, and that itself could take a few minutes, or it can take multiple sessions. Then from there, we also teach position. So where will the dog actually be while you are kayaking or paddle boarding? So in paddle boarding, we normally teach a middle for, or a, you know, sit at the end for kayaking. We have them usually sit or lay down in between your legs. Why is this video not playing? There we go. So position training in itself is another thing that we'll do before we even get on the kayak or paddleboard. And then we do that again on the kayak and paddleboard. Putting back in the water again, just being comfortable with the floating and the movement of the water. And then understanding what to do in case of emergency. So before you get on the water, you have to have a game plan. If you go in, your dog is attached to you by leash, you need to get to the water, to the paddleboard or kayak first, 
And then you can use the life vest to help bring your dog at least the front paws. They'll normally help you out from that point on. I can't stress enough to have your dog attached to you. There's risk, yes, but you won't lose your dog. If you're doing anything in open water, your dog, soon as they jump off of there, if they jump off, if they fall off for whatever reason, they will start swimming for land, right? right? And if you're near the ocean, you know, near the beach or something, your dog's going to hit that sand and go off running. Hopefully not, but I'm just saying that's a really big risk and it can be prevented by making sure a leash is attached to the dog. Now, there's also risk of a leash being attached to the dog of them choking on it, right? So you just have to be really careful of just where that leash is. Right. Yeah. And especially for supporting your dog, if they're they're panicking, they're looking around, they're swimming in circles, a lot of times it, it helps to just keep them still for a second and then kind of pick them up rather than you panicking and them panicking. Because you will, you'll, you'll get scared. The first time they fall in, it is unnerving. You might react, you're, you gasp really big. So they're gonna get scared. And so we need to be able to support them and then just make sure they're, you know, like, it's all good, no big deal. You know, <laughs> we're just gonna keep going. So tomorrow, I'm just gonna, um, tomorrow we have a live in-person swim lesson for a few of our students. So we might go live with that. I'm not quite sure how that's going to go. Uh, but we do have a learning to kayak with your dog. We do have a few spots open. If you are in the area and you are a current student, um, you're eligible. So that's going to be at the end of this month. It's 90 minutes. It's over here in Sunset Beach. And there is a charge for it. I think the charge is 59. And that includes the rental. It's just an introductory special. We just wanted to do a workshop. It's going to be on land. And some of you will actually get out on your kayak. Um, if you are already an avid paddleboarder and you want to go about it that way and get your dog on a paddleboard, we can do that lesson at the same time. So that is available to our current students. And that is at the end of the month. You'll just need to sign up um, and you can contact Julie or myself. All right. And then that brings us to the last slide, which is if you are have any questions about getting your dog comfortable in the water or you've got a pool and you're now feeling a little nervous. Yeah, if you, you want us to come and assess your the environment and the make sure that you're set up for safety, if this is kind of the first time you're being introduced to dog water safety. We can walk you through that step by step on a more personal level um, by contacting us and booking a call through our service. If you are out of the state and you're like, oh, I really want to still book a call with us because we have access to so many other trainers and we will help you find somebody in your area. I'm not sure about you, Henrik, because you're the only person I really know in your in country. Sweden. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But wherever you are, if you are you are wondering what you can do with uh, whatever your, your goals are or something, you can book a call with us. Absolutely. All right. So let me pull that off. And that brings us to the end of our presentation. I can't believe it. We did it in under an hour. We did it under time. Yeah, that oh. works. That's awesome. But if you guys do have questions, I will see that Henrik had some supportive uh, questions for us. Oh, and we have one more. But if you do have questions later on, like maybe you're watching this in the replay, please still feel free to drop the comments. I'll be going in throughout the, the next week to make sure um, that our, our questions are answered and to make sure we get to connect if you need to, or you can book a call through our service. It'll schedule an appointment automatically with us. Thank you guys for joining us live. We're going to go into some live Q&A in just one second. I'm just going to take a quick little, uh, just take, like, give me a minute break, and then I'm going to pull some of those questions up. Okay, Julie? Perfect. All right. Let's see. So if you are still out there, if you're watching this, please go ahead and feel free to ask all of the questions that you would like or that you've ever wanted to ask about dog swimming or different environments for dog swimming. So question from Nicole, how does dog positioning change if you have a large breed dog for kayaking or paddleboarding? 
This is a great question because we both have very large dogs and then Yo has a really, really tiny dog. So she's the, yeah, like a little tiny dog. So it's, it's, it is different when you're doing it with a small dog versus a big dog. Well, it depends on how comfortable you are. So let's just talk about paddle boarding because kayaking is pretty much, they should be like, you know, it, you want them to be in a place that keeps you safe. So I find that on the smaller dog side, they can go anywhere because it barely moves it's the board. Yeah. But when they're on a, a large dog, if you can get them to stay in a more relaxed state. So if you're on a kayak or on a paddle board, it's usually like in a, what we call a peekaboo, a middle position where they're, they're um, between your legs. So you can, you know, maneuver. But if you want to posi position them in the front, you'll just have to slightly move your weight back so that you're not tilting the paddle board or the kayak. So to answer your question, it does make a difference between a small and a big dog. You just need to keep the kayak or paddleboard balanced and the dog needs to stay as still as possible. You want them to get to the relaxed state where they're just kind of just surrendering and just be like, ah, and enjoying the experience. Yeah, you can even bring your dog, if your dog has a settle or a calm mat, you can actually lay that between your legs mm. to help them lay down. And I will say the little dogs usually sit somewhere higher up in our laps, but the big dogs sit, we want to teach them to be still when they sit and not do this big wide lean over because then you're going to have to overcorrect. So if you're not super confident in your balance or your dog's ability to hold still, I highly recommend doing the kayak first and then moving on to the paddleboard because just, just because of the angle of control for a larger dog. I just recently um, kayaked with Peanut, who had never been on a paddleboard or kayak, and he was really close to me. In fact, he was like laying over me and had a hard time with the paddle itself. So when it comes to kayaking, you want to position the dog in a, a place where you can still have room to move, right, if you need to. And you may need to adjust and shift. But the, to answer your question, it's where they can sit still and chill and relax and where you feel like you're balanced. And if you have a baby puppy, you're doing, you're in the socialization period, grab one of those puppy backpacks or the front packs oh, where you can strap them onto your chest because they might be really wiggly and excited. You know, their butts shake and they knock themselves over. So sometimes having that little kind of puppy papoose or even a backpack can help them stay still and calm while you're doing all of that physical work and then short productive trips don't go out for an hour your very first time really try to introduce them in shorter productive trips great question nicole so if you have a question you can drop it in the comments we can see your questions right here live if you're watching the replay you can ask those questions a little bit later in the comments and just put a hashtag replay so we can come back around and take a look all right. Absolutely. So I'm excited. Tomorrow we have a swim lesson with a couple dogs that have never been in the water, I don't think. And Julie's going to get to go in and go swimming a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Super fun. I'm going to have to get some, dig up some of my uh, dry fast clothes, but um, it's, it is going to be fun. I'll, I'll, I love being in the water with my dogs. I love watching the joy and the happiness of their faces when we go to the beach. And I, I'm really excited that we get this, this chance in our beach community to teach people about the safety and the fun things that you can do that don't always have to do with being in the water, like you said. Yeah. All right, guys, we will end our workshop now. And again, this was recorded. So feel free to share it with anyone that is wanting to do any kind of water sports or if they live by the lake or the ocean. It is currently on the Canine Learning Academy YouTube. So you can watch right there. It was just streamed directly through there and you can share it to anyone that might not need to hear it. But thank you, Julie, for joining me midday. And we've got a couple minutes to spare before our time is up. And I think I'm going to take my dogs out to the water. I, I'm, now that we've been talking about it, I'm like, I need to get on the beach today. So that is my goal as well. Thank you guys so much for joining us. We hope you learned some good information and we will see you the next time for one of our workshops. Bye for now.